it's me. <laughs> You're watching too. It's been so much. It's just, I was like, I thought of this the other day because I was like, because, you know, they aren't, it's just every time they answer the phone. Yeah. <laughs> it's me. It, you gotta say it. It's me. Hello. It's me. That's it. Done. Deal. I always say it's me. And then people are like, who? Really? You fucking idiot. <laughs> Well, I don't even. It's, it's, it's like nowadays you don't need that because you have this magical thing called caller ID. That's very true. That's very true. But you also just day... think at some point that they'd look at the number and be like, "Oh, that's my partner. I know their number," and you know that they know each other's numbers by heart. Are you sure they know? Like, no, they know. do because they will often go to like house phones and just call them up on their their, their mobiles. Oh. Maybe it's on the wall in somebody else's house. Oh. <laughs> Okay, yeah, no. <laughs> like, they'll be at a crime scene and be like, I gotta call, you know, my partner. <laughs> Just go to somebody else's phone. Yes. Yeah, it's on the wall. <laughs> it's somebody else's house. Why not? It works. In my head, it works. <laughs> That's all that matters. <laughs> do you want to introduce our fantastic little podcast? I could do that. Hi, everyone. Welcome to All the Films We Judged Before. I'm Katie. That's Lily K. And that's it. There's nobody else here. No. It's just the two of us mm-hmm. today. Uh, but, you know, that it's nice to have some beautiful interviews, but we're going to have more in the future. But until then, uh, I once again came up with an idea because, you know, <laughs> there's not many things to watch on TV or the cinema. So we were like, hmm, what to do? Uh, so today we're going to list three underrated movies like three per person so six in reality that you should watch and you should check out that's going to be today's uh big mission and uh we're just gonna get right into it because why the hell not all three of my movies are definitely movies i've mentioned on this podcast before because i have no originality (laughs) same i'm probably the same i'm not gonna lie uh but yeah let's get right into it and we're gonna start with you katie What's your first movie recommendation? Which one do I want to go for first? Because I'm looking at my little list and I'm like, what, what, what? I'll go for the more interesting one, I think, okay. first. Because I, I I went I went back into my little indie um okay. little bit of selection of indie movies that I like. And I decided um on uh it's got two names in various places because you know it's what happens, I guess. Um so in some places it's called Laggies and in other places it's called Say When. Yes. And I think you already recommended this movie. Yeah, I will <laughs> do it again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can like I literally I was going through and I can I, because I think last time because we've done this before. I'm pretty yes. sure last time I mentioned Drinking Buddies and I was like I can't do that again. Yes, I think you did. Um, so I I went I went with Aggies because you know what it's fucking great and people don't <laughs> know about it and I wanted to go for something. I've just looked at my list again and I've seen another one that actually probably would have been better. <laughs> you can go with that one. I don't mind. Like, is is it the one with Kira Knightley and Sam Rockwell? Yes, it is. It's it's yeah. it's 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 because yeah. I mean, for one thing, it's Kira Knightley and it's Sam Rockwell. What yes. makes up? Yes. What more could you want? Oh, stop, but also, stop. it's it's a Lynn um, Sheldon um, movie. Um, she passed away uh, in I think a couple of years ago now, maybe last mm. year. It was, it was relatively recently anyway. Yeah. Um, but it's just a really sweet movie. It's a good movie. It's so, it's lovely. It's not very long, which, you know, it, nowadays is, you know, a big bonus. Uh, yeah. <laughs> because there are so many very long movies. And I say that as somebody who went and saw Mission Impossible 3, not 3, um, 7 again recently, which is about three hours long. And I started a great time. But... <laughs> But it's still a long movie. It's a long movie. Yeah. Pardon me. And there are just so many very long movies. And I think to be able to have like a really tight 90 minute film mm. about, you know, trying to figure out what you want to do in life. Um, also, Chloe Grace Moretz is in it. Yes. She's the yes. other uh, a very important part. And I think it's one of those. Mo- it, Sam Rockwell so often plays somebody absolutely fucking insane. You know, because he's great at it. He is very good at it, and I don't deny that. I love Sam Rockwell, um, and he's very funny. But he gets to be like a proper romantic lead in this, and it's mm. just nice. 
It's like wanting to see Ben Barnes do a bit more romance as opposed to being a bad vibe constantly. Or, or just be like a good person. <laughs> it's not terrible. <laughs> no. it's like as, as much as we love and uh, think he's great at it, it's like it's really nice to be able to see these kinds of actors just be yeah. like lovely. And he is. He's just lovely in this. He's just he's just a tired single dad who's a lawyer and. Yeah. It's I don't know. It's just a really sweet film. I, there's something I, there is something very indescribable about these kinds of movies that um I look I I, I see them and I'm like yeah it's yeah. just real it's okay. I don't know something comforting about them I guess hmm. I mean it's it's always nice and the uh, you mentioning Ben Barnes is very funny to me because if you got a Ben Barnes movie on your list no no oh. no no but uh, I I texted you a few days ago. Uh, about a youtuber called the friendly space Ninja. oh yeah, yeah, yeah and and i just watched uh well watched more like listen to uh, his uh recap and essay on shadow and boon and there was this part where he's like when you put pam Barnes in anything i now just automatically know that he's gonna be the bad guy so they try to be all like mysterious and who's the darkling and everything and it's it's pam Barnes because of course it is <laughs> and i'm like Yes, that's my problem as well. Like, please make him a good guy. He's excellent in the Chronicles of Narnia, Prince Caspian, side rent, by the way. So I'm like, you know, he can play the good guy. It's okay. I know he's, he's very he's good just, as a bad guy, but like he, he's he's one of those things. It's like it's like it's like Andrew Scott. He's got those re- really dark features yeah. that kind of make him just the easy to be like. <laughs> Yes, and he's very good at it as well. He's so very that good at helps. It. So like, is Andrew Scott. <laughs> true. But like, you know, he can be a very good good guy. <laughs> so, true too. Just please, like, you know, you give away your movie instantly if the man is in it. I want a twist where it's not Ben Barnes. <laughs> he's actually the good character. So like Hello, please, thank you. So yeah, that's just reminding me. But yeah, Sam Rockwell is great as a lunatic and and a crazy person and everything. It, yeah, it, it's just it's just even nicer to see him be a sweet guy. True, true. <laughs> because he is a sweet guy. A sweet guy, and this is a really sweet movie. Just all mm. of it is lovely, and it's one of the really early A twenty four produced, not produced, d- distributed movies. Oh. Um, so if you like eighty twenty four movies and that kind of, it's not like particularly weird. Mm. So it's a very down to earth sort of movie, but it's just it's I don't know, it's just nice. Yeah, and it exactly fits in my three star um uh like indie movie like <laughs> thing. <laughs> I'm like these are some of my favorites because I'm literally looking at the um the uh what are they called um review scores sure uh and it's like 65 percent rotten tomatoes letterbox has it at 3.1 mgb has it at 6.4 i'm like yeah perfect right in the middle right in the middle. <laughs> sometimes those are just the greatest i think they're the best i don't know yeah. i don't <laughs> <laughs> that's fair that's fair well i so that's one out of that three. is one uh should we go like half half or just you know, one by one. Yeah, well, just, you should go next. I'm just trying to decide if I want to change out one of these to the other one I saw on, <laughs> in, in my little my little um, list. Fair, fair. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go... Uh, so I wrote uh, two horror movies and uh, one documentary. Uh, <laughs> so first, uh, I'm going to go with one of the horror movies, and it's this freaking jam, Dr. Sleep. You know, I, because I were very recently in recent months realized that that is a mike Flanagan property it is. i'm way more interested in it than i was before <laughs> it is it's mike Flanagan. ewan mcgregor is uh, uh playing young danny torrance uh so it's you know it's obviously uh a follow-up uh to stanley kubrick's uh oh names shining the shining um <laughs> with jack nicholson uh, and obviously it's from Stephen King's Doctor Sleep book, uh, which is the follow up to Shining. Uh, but I will say this, and I will not be popular with this. I didn't like The Shining at all. Like I the... still haven't seen it. <laughs> it's in my opinion, <laughs> unsurprising. In, in my humble opinion, you didn't lose much. Like I didn't like the movie. I didn't like the book either. It was like I, don't know, uh, I just didn't really care about it. It didn't captivate me as it was intended to. So mm. I was always like meh. Uh, but uh, I read Doctor Sleep, 
I really like Doctor Sleep. I was like, if The Shining would have been like Doctor Sleep, I would be into it so much. Uh, but uh, alas, they announced that they're going to make a movie out of it with freaking Ewan McGregor. Uh, at that point, I knew who Mike Flanagan was because of uh, a previously mentioned Mike Flanagan movie, Hush, okay. oh, okay. which is on uh, Netflix. Uh, I, did, I did. I did watch that one. I did. I, I know. I did enjoy it. Gosh, it's so good. I, mm, I fucking love it. Uh, and uh, and I was very excited because if they nailed it, this is an excellent movie. And in my humble opinion, again, my friend again fucking nailed it. Uh, I loved how they turned it in because it's it's like this is the book. Like it's it's this thick. It's a lot of things happening in there, and I think they were able to like grab the most important thing out of it and just put it in, into the movie. So I'm like, and Ewan McGregor is fucking majestic in it. So like, you know, the best casting in there, uh, obviously. And it's just, it's freaking great. It introduces new things to the whole Shining story that would have been really great <laughs> earlier on, uh, as I said it. So, you know, if you like horror, if you like horror mixed with fantasy, uh, if you like The Shining as well, uh, and just Stephen King in general, and Mike Flanagan, that's a very important part in that because it is a Mike Flanagan film and it's so obviously a Mike Flanagan film that it's Do it's people like... go on very long monologues about the nature of life and existence? Excellent. I love it. Just excellent. Uh, then you could love this. So Dr. Sleep. That's it answer. feels, considering how much I have... I'm going to use a word here, pontificated on this podcast about uh, the, my my real love of dream logic in film. I love dreams and I love the way that they go. Yeah, it's, it just, I, I look at it and I'm like, this would be up my alley. I think the thing that I haven't, I haven't gone and watched it, the, the reason is because I haven't seen The Shining and I have that sort of sense of like, you don't, you don't yeah, but like for me, I would need to. <laughs> It's it, like you know, it's it's fine for a one-time watch. I sure, guess. and I just it's one, and it's just it's just the nature of like because technically speaking, it's a sequel. And brain's like, well, you have to see the first one. That's just how it works. Not really. They explain everything so very well. No, it doesn't matter how many times you say no, not really. I'm still gonna need to do. It. Okay, well, it's up to you. Like, you know, it's not a, uh, Shining is not a bad movie too much, but uh, I wouldn't watch it again. It's just that simple. It's like, yeah, yeah it's fine. Uh, I think it was so different from the book that that's why I didn't like it. Although I can't really put my. I mean, that's why Stephen it. King didn't like it very much. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't know. Jack Nicholson is fucking great in it. So, like, but that's not surprising. He's fucking great in general uh, in movies. So I'm like, yeah, but I just don't care. I just. I just didn't care about it. It's like the book is better. <laughs> I was I was gonna make a joke about the shining episode of uh, Psych, but I couldn't remember what it was called, and then I forgot what I was googling part of the way through googling it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just everything it's going well. It's called Here's Lassie. That's yeah. why, and it is yeah. that is an excellent episode. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> and um, Ready Player One also has the shining sequence in it, which I thought was very good. But only in the movie, because in the book, it's not the shining sequence. But, you know, that's like a fun fact. So watch Doctor Sleep, because my friend is great, and he made a great fucking adaptation of the book. So uh, not enough people watched it. And I I don't think there's enough love uh, out there for it. And there should be, because it was it's genuinely amazing. And I've watched it like five times since <laughs> I first saw it. And I'm still disappointed that I didn't go to the cinema to watch it. Was it 20? I should have. Uh, 16? I think so, 16, I believe. Because I was like, oh. Oculus came out in 2013. 19. 2019? God, it was recent. 19. It's very recent. 2019. Found it now. So. Yeah. yeah. yeah I knew I it... remember seeing ads for it when it came out. I yeah. just didn't think it was, I just thought it was earlier than that. No, I was already in London. I remember <laughs> that, so yeah, time. Who cares? What's also, that? Rebecca Ferguson's in it. That was, oh, I yeah, was like, she's fucking, fucking great. I was like, there's a woman in the hat, and I yes. can't remember her. I can see yes. her face. I couldn't remember who it was. Of course, it's Rebecca Ferguson. I love she's, Rebecca Ferguson. She is the moment in there. It's like, mm, great casting, although everything is great about it. Fucking watch it. That's the message. <laughs> Your turn, Katie. What's I've taken off um, one of my things um, okay. because I saw 
um i don't even know if i could count this as like underrated it's just like it's just it's a really it's really small in the movie um and i watched this because um this was just uh, around the time i was watching psych so i wanted to see james rodeo rodriguez and more stuff so i was going through his filmography he did a very small movie in 2016 called pushing dead about where he plays um yeah I, i'm not surprised you haven't heard of it it was no. a really small movie i could only i had to buy it on amazon like i, I couldn't rent it i had to buy it on amazon in order to uh, in order to um watch it yeah. um and I'll, I'll i'll just i'll read the little synopsis that i've got on that spot because yes. i think it, it would probably be the best way to to describe what the movie yes. is and he says when a struggling writer hiv positive for 20 plus years accidentally deposits a hundred dollar birthday check he's dropped from his health plan for his earning too much in this new era of sort of universal care can he uh, take on the helpless bureaucracy or come up with three thousand dollars a month to buy his meds on his own and so he's like a poet he does a lot of um beat poetry and it's just a really again yeah, it's it's another it's a really quiet film james is fucking fantastic in it mm. um it's a really emotional movie he does this sort of piece of like um uh uh uh, beat poetry, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, slam poetry thing at the end of the movie, which is just so stunning. <laughs> at least I thought. Um, yeah, it's just a, it's a, it's a, it's just a really, it's a really small, quiet little film. I think it was, I think it was, I want to say it was set in like Sandy, it's San Francisco or something like mm. that. Um, I don't know if it up real quick. Um, but yeah, it's it's a really, it's it's one of those movies where. Not a whole lot happens in it, but the, I think the characters are really um fun to watch. Um, Danny Glover is in it. Um, it's yeah, I don't I don't really know how to um. It it's very much like writer director, uh, mm-hmm. vibes. One guy wrote it, one guy directed the whole thing, and um, it's a queer story because he is yeah it, um the he goes through. <laughs> There's a whole subplot where he meets a guy um, uh, and gets like really giggly about the fact that he's like flirting with this guy and it's entirely adorable. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's just, it, it, I think it it kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? I wouldn't say it like analyzes, but it, 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 it dives into a little bit the mm-hmm. sort of, um, it's a little bit about, you know, American healthcare. And uh, and a little bit about like what it means to be HIV positive in the modern day because mm-hmm. thank God it's no longer a death sentence like it yes. used to be. Yes. Um. But it's he's still a man who when he when it when he got it it was you know full of shame and 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 all this sort of stuff and mm-hmm. he's just sort of been surviving for twenty plus years and not really living. Um. I don't know. He it's just I just think it's. I loved it, I, and it was one of those ones. I, I like these are the types of movies I really love watching. It like really late at night, very dark. <laughs> um, just me and like a little like. A, I watched it on, on the TV downstairs actually, but um, it would be the sort of movie I'd end up watching on my laptop, just like, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I don't know. I, I watched it. It was um, it was last year. I watched it, so it, it has been a minute. But um, it's I just I just really like it uh and it's one of those it's so so such a tiny little movie i don't think most people will have heard of it so i'm hoping that some people will check it out trailer is available to watch elsewhere it's a little bit it gets a little bit strange in places if i remember correctly it it, Mm -hmm. it kind of plays with the idea of being a little bit like irreverent but doesn't really like commit to it particularly much in places so it's you know it's not a perfect movie by any stretch but i like again i like those I like the fact that you can feel like this is this was a bunch of people who came together and like had a small budget and were like we're gonna make this movie. Yeah, <laughs> you know? those are the best ones. Let's be fair. Yeah, a lot of times those are the best ones. I like that. What's the what's the title again? Pushing Dead. Pushing Dead. Okay, okay, I like that. Uh, I'm gonna cheat for the next <laughs> one a little bit because you know I just remembered the movie that I really want to talk about. So I will quickly say because I think this one is more well known, but I will still say it. Please watch Coven in the Moon. <laughs> like, it's genius. It's still one of the best uh, horror movies of modern age. It has Chris Hemsworth in it, and he's great at it. 
uh, everyone is graded and and it's a lot of fun and it has Sigourney Weaver so automatically Sigourney Weaver movie watch it <laughs> that's the quick one <laughs> if you're going to do that one I'm going to put in the one I I just crossed off yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm going to mention that people really need to watch the nice guys uh that was going to be the one I mentioned oh, okay okay because you mention it and people are like oh I haven't seen that one I'm like fucking watch the nice guys it did not get the attention it deserved when it came out it's so fucking good <laughs> I will once again say with the nice guys, I had a very hard time with it because I just I just didn't see the appeal. Uh, and I haven't watched it since, but I'm thinking about it. It's so silly. <laughs> but that's the thing. Like for me, it wasn't silly. It was like okay. It's oh it's extreme. No, it's very silly. <laughs> it's the... so it's so peak like detective movie. I just it took me by surprise. I really enjoyed it. Um I think it's Ryan Gosling's best uh comedic for, for, for yeah. performance. And he is the thing that makes it great. Him and the girl who plays was... his daughter in it. Yeah. Are yeah. hysterically funny. Um yeah. I mean, plus I think it's a good I think it's just a good mystery. <laughs> I don't I, I don't I don't even remember the story of it. It's like I remember that it's Russell Crowe and, and Ryan Gosling. So I will probably watch it again at one point or another, but I, I just I don't know. I just didn't find it funny. I mean, the I, the only thing I remember from it is when they are on drugs, and I think it's Ryan who imagines Rosso to be a bee or something like that. It's it's in the car. That's the only thing that stuck with me. I don't me. remember that at all. You don't? No. But that, there's there's a part like that, like they are in the car and one of them is on drugs by accident. As it's something like that. I, I mean, that doesn't surprise me. That doesn't sound like that doesn't sound like the movie. And that doesn't, yeah. doesn't come. I love. It, it, there's a bit where he just i mean the physical comedy in that movie is hysterically funny because it's a bit where he falls off the back of like what oh, looks like a kind just... of a balcony and he just he just he just rolls away yeah, <laughs> he's it's, gone it's, for a long time it's very it's very hard to watch it for it's like oh the bones everything is breaking whoa <laughs> I even yeah, there are like whores here we don't say like just say dad there are whores <laughs> yeah fair uh all right should have got the, the sequel the... <laughs> The real recommendation I'm going to say because I think it's a very good movie and not enough people have seen it. It's called An Unfinished Life and it's full of big names so I'm just going to quickly list them. It has Damien Lewis, Joss uh, Lucas, Morgan Freeman, Robert Rashford and Jennifer Lopez as the main characters. Uh, it's beautifully done. It's about uh, a mother and her daughter fleeing from a domestic abuse uh um, relationship. We're picking some real fun movies, huh? Yeah, <laughs> so fun. Uh, but this this movie is is just beautiful. It's, she basically Jennifer Lopez's character called Jean uh, decides to go back uh, to uh, her ex father in law uh, because uh, you know she needs a place where she can hide from this psycho who's played by Damien Lewis. It's always great. Damien Lewis is, you know very good in everything he does uh and um uh, we slowly find out what happened uh back in the day how uh the love of uh her life died and uh, uh her little girl basically makes uh a new found friendship with uh not just uh the grandfather uh, she never got to meet before but uh, also his friend played by Morgan Freeman and the bear funnily enough <laughs> and uh, it's just you know it's such a beautiful story about uh, uh, how to start a new life and and uh, uh, you know how, how to find happiness again uh, and I really 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 loved it I don't think enough people have seen this movie and I got reminded of it uh, after finishing an Amazon Prime series uh, with Sigourney Weaver again uh, um Lost Flowers of Alice Hart. Highly recommended. Also, we'll give a trigger warning because it deals with domestic abuse as well. Uh, but it's it was a beautiful series and I cried my fucking eyes out by the end. <laughs> Just tears, tears. <laughs> Same with that unfinished life. Um, it's a really good movie. It's like I think this is a 90 minutes movie as well. Yeah, a bit a tiny bit longer than 90 minutes. Uh and it's it's a beautiful story to watch. Uh so an unfinished life. I think you can find it on Prime, if I remember correctly. I have it as a DVD, but I didn't bring it here because I was I, I'm forgetful. Just it's just me. <laughs> 
yeah, it, P- Pushing Dead is one of those movies that's like genuinely it's such a small thing that mm. um, it's the DVD version does not exist. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's like that and and Celeste and Jesse Forever. I was like, can't nope. There's no this this does not exist as a DVD at least in the UK. I think it might in the, in the US, but like distributed yeah. here, barely. barely. <laughs> fun times uh let's hear your last one then my last one because i um uh i sort of info dumped to uh, a friend of mine about this the other night um because we were talking about i was talking about my posters um just generally we were mm-hmm. having a discussion about the posters and she mentioned um they mentioned that um uh sorry because I, I looked up an unfinished life and i looked over and i just saw what does the bear symbol <laughs> 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 just it threw me through a loop um uh but i was they were talking about they have a lot of big opera posters and i was like oh i've got one like really huge one as well and it was my cloud atlas poster and then i started talking about cloud atlas and i was thinking about how great a movie cloud atlas is yes so i'd like to recommend cloud atlas there is an understandable and very real um criticism the fact that there is a significant amount of yellow face in that movie in that there are white actors who are made to look like asian people um i and i I, um i'm yes i understand entirely i'm not going to say that it's wrong or or like that they're wrong or anything along those lines i also understand the point i don't know it's not for me to decide whether or not it's it's a good enough reason i'm gonna leave that for other people however the actual movie itself is so gorgeous the soundtrack is amazing mm. i put the cloud out of the sector on the other night and i was like this is just this is just a great piece of music and i don't listen to soundtracks very often i always forget I, like i always have the intention to but i it, i don't know i'm not somebody who actually sits down and like listens to music whilst not really doing anything else um where when and when when it comes to soundtracks that's what i'd want to do because that you have to kind of actually appreciate them otherwise i just won't hear them they'll just be noise yeah to me yeah, 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 um, yeah. and it's a lot easier to do that sort of thing with a song because you've got lyrics and then i can like, sing along and all that sort of stuff but with a soundtrack i just sort of forget to actually take the time to like listen to them but i listened to the cloud out the soundtrack so much when that mm. movie came out also a weird sort of and i think we mentioned this like way back when we did our episode about like movie trailers Yes. I think um, it's got one of the best movie trailers ever. hundred oh, percent. <laughs> like the extended trailer for that is like five minutes long, and you're like, "This is this in itself is a great movie." Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the cast is incredible. Um, mm-hmm. Tom Hanks loved the whole material so much that he basically funded it himself. Yeah. Um, it's it's directed by the Wachowskis. Um, I got into it because it was right around the time I was watching The Hour, so um, I found out that through Ben Wishaw who is great in it has some mm. very and I and Robert Frobisher um that that story is my favorite and was when I read the book as well mm-hmm. um it's the saddest one of the bunch but like it is, it is yeah <laughs> um, it is. and he's he's so he's so lovely in it plus you get to see him play Hugh Grant's wife in one of the other ones which is also hysterically funny <laughs> it's so good <laughs> um but yeah I mean it's got your the lovely Duna yes. Bay yeah. um uh, it, it, there's so many great people in it Susan Sarandon um Jim Broadbent Halle Berry Halle Berry uh Tom Hanks has mentioned yeah. um uh I'm trying to go through like the list of people that pop up at the end of the trailer Sorry. but like it, there's just, just so many people in it yeah and yes it is three hours and yes I argue it's not as good as the book because the book is so specifically what? structured but yeah. it was so it's such it was such an ambitious thing and I think mm. it didn't get the appreciation that it deserved no. when it came out. Yeah, um, yeah I agree. But yeah, I, there are some understandable criticisms with it. Totally understand. Um, like with everything. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, and it, um, it's one of those things where it's like I, I think, I think the heart of that movie is so prevalent. It, it, you should mm-hmm. at least give it a chance anyway. And if you yeah. can't see past some of the other things, get it. I, I, I understand. I won't. I won't hold it against you. I just think it's beautiful. Yes, I will also point out that if you did like Cloud Atlas, uh, then watch Sense Eight. Uh, oh, absolutely! <laughs> because it's just gorgeous. And vice versa. If you really liked Sense Eight, go watch Cloud Atlas. That's yeah. 
it works both ways it so works just both ways just do it just, it's very much that same sort of sense of like it is it's about living it and is about just living life. yeah yeah so go and watch and book. read the book which is by david oh, yeah. mitchell not yeah, yeah. the comedian david mitchell the author no. david mitchell two different david mitchells it's a very good book i it's a great book i loved it fucking love them love the movie as well it, uh, uh, the the, the sick story is a bit difficult to read it is <laughs> that is some heavy you... heavy syntax yeah but but once you get the hang of it then it's like it that, that it, it's like i looked at it, 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 it yet yeah, the other day it's less than 100 pages that whole thing i think it took me like three months to read it I had real trouble with it, um, but I read yeah. it. I was reading a couple pages of it. it. I think it actually would sound better if it was like read aloud because it's such a heavy, uh, yeah, like yeah, accented thing. Um, I think that's part of that. That whole thing actually works way better in the um in the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. but yeah, it's about reincarnated souls and like choosing different decisions in life and and mm-hmm. how people are bound together, past and present. <laughs> It's with beautiful <laughs> and every it kindness is. we birth our future i'm just yeah. quoting the trailer now yeah it's so good uh excellent what a good recommendation uh, it's gonna make you cry so <laughs> it, it will <laughs> <laughs> be prepared uh all right my last recommendation is a complicated one in a way but not really <laughs> uh so first uh i will talk about a little movie called galaxy quest uh, which is one of the greatest uh, space movie Star Trek okay. parody I was just movie. double checking. It was like, I was going through my head. I was like, did I hear that right? Did she say Galaxy Quest? <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course I said. Okay. Yes. It's, it's, uh, if you, if you haven't seen Galaxy Quest, then start with that. Please do that first. It's honestly, it's still one of my favorite uh, sci-fi movies, uh, comedy movies, whatever. You can put it in so many categories and it works. Uh, it has Tim Allen, Sigourney Weaver. Sigourney Weaver is a thing today. I love Sigourney Weaver. And if you didn't know that, now you know. <laughs> it has Sam Rockwell, um, uh, Tony Shalob, uh, the late and great Alan Rickman, uh, so many so many people in there and it's it's just a joy to watch it's a yes. perfect yes i was just i was saying i was i saw tony shalhoub in, in a in a in an x-files episode the other day i totally forgot he was in the the show and it was a great episode it's a vince gilligan episode so you know it's gonna be a decent <laughs> episode of television <laughs> Fair, fair. Uh, so you know and then they much much later on uh, uh, like you know the movie came out in 1999 I'm yes. looking at it now thank you uh, and uh, they made a documentary about Galaxy Quest much later on uh, called uh, Never Surrender uh, and I finally watched it it took me a long time It, I think it was produced by um Screen Screen Smash, uh, the one who does uh, cinema fights and honest trailers and and all that stuff. Oh, okay. Uh, I think it's I think called Screen Smash. I think so. But funnily can... enough, the way I'm go- the, I googled it and it didn't come up in the like information um, <laughs> on the side. But I was like, oh, okay, that's not very helpful. That's um, it. Uh, wait, hold on. We're gonna find it out in one second. Wait a minute. Hold on, when. Stupid. Screen Junkies, sorry. Screen Junkies. Right. Uh, it was produced by Screen Junkies. I did uh, know that. Why didn't... <laughs> I, I knew it as well, but for some reason, Screen Smash was in my head. Uh, anyway, it was produced by them. They also very much love uh, the movie. And I gotta say, it is such a wonderful thing to see how it all came together to have the cast there and and you know talk about the whole experience how the casting was uh how did they come up with the idea uh all the directors that they had to go through who should play the the main character that was like a very big thing because a lot of people weren't sure uh, about uh Tim Allen being cast as as the main uh protagonist of the of the whole movie and it's it's just it's such well produced media and uh, it it gives you an insight on how how much it is loved uh, around the world and uh, also uh, the one criticism I will say is that they left the music on too loud uh, <laughs> under every single interview that they did and it's it's a bit it's a bit annoying I 
to, fair, to be fair, I watched it on the flight back home from London. So I was like, maybe it was the headphones. It wasn't. I checked it afterwards on my TV. <laughs> and it was still very loud. Uh, but it pays such... I think it's one of my favorite tri uh, tributes to any uh, actor who passed away, uh, unfortunately, to Alan Rickman, uh, who was also one of the main, main characters in the movie. And, uh, um, you know, hearing all the cast talk about him, because it's a little known fact that there was supposed to be a Galaxy Quest uh, series coming out uh, with all the cast returning, so everyone would have come back. And uh, before they signed the contract, Alan Rickman said he passed away uh, and they talked about him in length and how wonderful he was and how <laughs> he didn't really fit in there at first because you know he you, you think of him as this very serious actor <laughs> this English man <laughs> he's just the funniest and sweetest now person now I have machine gun <laughs> oh oh oh, oh. <laughs> uh, where's Alan Rickman in <laughs> it was good. I I recognized it. It was great. <laughs> so I can't, you know. I can't do that thing. It's like it's like I can't do that kind of. I can't pinch my voice in the way that they you need for those sorts of voices. I can't do Kermit for shit. Every time I try, it just goes so badly. Yeah, I, I tried. It's not working. It's not for us, Katie. It's not for us. Uh, so if for nothing else, watch Ever So Under for Ellen, or watch it for the nostalgia, and uh, watch it for the movie and then watch Galaxy Quest or watch Galaxy Quest before and then watch Never Surrender. It's your choice. You you can go wrong with it because it's genuinely great and uh, yeah, it was made with love and it shows. That's oh. it. That's it. That's, that's it. That's the message today. <laughs> watch movies that were made with love. That's <laughs> No, I honestly, yeah, that's a very good point. Actually, I think it's nice to go make an effort to. I think in in this current climate, it's such a it's such a thing, um, as well to make mm. make effort to go buy movies that are not made by any of the big people that mm -hmm. everybody's striking against at the moment. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, just like if you can own things, yeah. good. Um, I understand you know if you can't find it actually anywhere available go nuts find it wherever you can but like yeah um if you can if you can give money to the people who make these little movies it is very helpful and important mm -hmm. very true very true so yeah that was our six underrated movies that you should definitely watch close to uh, eight <laughs> yeah but like yeah maybe nine actually because you <laughs> maybe it's okay it's okay we, we cheated a, a tiny bit just a tiny bit uh, we're gonna be back uh next week and we put out uh, a question for you on twitter you can share your thoughts here under this one as a comment we're gonna mm -hmm. check it and we're gonna talk about it next week share your unpopular movie or tv series opinion uh and uh, let us pick it apart uh maybe we can agree maybe we're gonna disagree and that's what's gonna make it fun i already know that what ian brought is something that i highly disagree with <laughs> so, <laughs> he nailed it <laughs> he absolutely nailed it uh but we're gonna, get, we're gonna get into it uh the next time we're gonna be around uh until then find us on the socials uh, mm -hmm. that are in the description you mm -hmm. can catch me on the Ahsoka chronicles as well uh that premieres also on Thursdays so you know double us double me <laughs> on that day uh, and uh, yeah don't forget to subscribe mm -hmm. like and comment mm -hmm. because it helps mm -hmm. and uh, see you next time watch movies <laughs>